G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's clip I'm going to give you a bit of a walk through our new aquaponics system. So there you go folks, there's a bit of an overview of the system itself. I will be doing um, future clips on the radial flow settler and the funky little filter I have in the sump tank. So if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by hitting that little um, subscribe button down there and then pounding on the bell icon once it appears and YouTube will um, send you notifications when I upload those clips and you can come along and check them out. And yeah, so I suppose we'll um, have a little bit of a look uh, following the pump all the way through. Uh, this is a split flow system by the way folks. Um, so what that means is the pump is sending water to or splitting the flow both to the fish tank and to the grow sides. So if you want a better explanation there's a little bit of a uh, clip just up in there. It runs through three of the most popular aquaponic systems that backyarders like to build. So check that out if you're interested. But we will follow the water flow um, from the pump down in there all the way up to the fish tank. The fish tank is a thousand litres or roughly 250-ish gallons. It has an air stone in the back there, a solids lifting outlet in the centre and the water is a bit murky at the moment because the clay still got a bit of dust in it. A couple of days and it'll all settle down. Um, that solids lifting out overflow has a little inlet on the base and it draws water from the base of the tank and then out to the radial flow settler. That little opening there just prevents a siphon from being initiated and draining all the tank down. And I will be making a stand for this lid so we can leave it open. Uh, now the water exits via a uni seal in the side of the tank and then down through some pipe work into the radial flow settler. The radial flow settler is made out of 200 litre or around about 50, 55 gallon drum. I've just chopped the lid off and I'll run through how I made it later on. But just to give you an idea, there's a stand pipe down the bottom there um, that redirects the flow upwards inside the stilling well and when the water hits the top of the stilling well it is redirected down the side and towards the base of the settler again and once the water passes that bottom edge there uh, the velocity of the water slows down and that allows any of the solid particulate to um, accumulate on the bottom where I can then drain it off at a later date using that valve and I like to put a pump on there just to make it more efficient but yeah, I'll run through that in the build clip and then from there we have a little exit pipe here that runs down into a fines filter which will also act as a bit of a, um, a biological filter as well. I've just made up this nifty little um, attachment here just to spread the water out a bit. It's got shade cloth in there so that'll provide loads of um, surface area for the bacteria to colonize and then they can help process some of the waste um, even before it makes it out into the grow beds themselves. Uh, the main reason it's in there though is to collect a lot of the fine solids because radial flow filters in the backyard setting aren't 100% efficient. Um, so I would like to collect some of those fines before they settle out in the bed themselves. Oh, by the way, for you folks who are interested, um, I clocked the flow rate through the radial flow settler at roughly 1800 litres an hour. So with a 200 litre um, uh, vessel there. I've got roughly around about 6.6 .6 minute retaining time, uh, retention time, sorry. Uh, so that allows a lot of time for the solids to fall out into the base of the filter itself. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the original one we had only had about a two minute retaining time or retention time, sorry. It's been a long day. And um, yeah, it, it collected a load of solids. So I'm fairly sure this one's going to do just as good a job. Uh, now onto the grow beds. I'll go around the other side for that. So the pump down the base there brings the water up and it's teed off over here uh, to this little Y fitting. Uh, the first line goes off to this grow bed where it's uh, basically a flood and drain media based one using the clay. The bell siphon's in the far corner and the inlet's over here. And the second one runs alongside this 400 litre grow bed that I got off Danny. Thank you very much mate. And yeah, same thing, um, fills there and then it uh, floods and then triggers a bell siphon in there and that just dumps all the water back into the sump tank. If you are interested in how my bell siphons are made you can check out that little clip up there, run through how they work and whatnot. Now in this bed we already have a couple of plants. These guys came in uh, with the media, they're Warrigal Greens, uh, they're native to Australia, Asia and some places in South America. They're basically a warm weather um, spinach substitute. We really like them, use them a lot, and they do taste a lot like spinach. And I did notice that we do have another one germinating over here. I think I crushed him today when I was patting the clay down, but hopefully he'll take off. Um, so yeah, uh, once the water dumps back into the sump tank, obviously it's picked up by the pump again. 
and then it's sent out to either the grow beds or the fish tank. Now that little pump down in there, actually the siphon's about to start, I'll move around the other side. For some reason I thought that was a 3500 litre an hour pump, but it's not. It's actually a 3000 litre an hour pump. The reason I know is I, had, I bought two, one for mum and dad's system and one for ours when I did the chop and flips. Um, the chop and flip aquaponics system, you can check out that little clip up there if you're interested on how they're made. But this one here says 3000 litres an hour, 3.5 metre head height, 85 watt. And I have a 3,500 liter an hour pump here, which was a backup to our original system. It's 3,500 liters an hour, and it has a maximum head height of four meters. So I, I dare say this will give us a little bit more flow, which will come in handy because as you can see, this, is, um, this valve running to the fish tank is open full bore at the moment. And if I'm only going to be getting 1,800 liters an hour now, once a bit of crud builds up on the lines, a bit of um, bio slime, um, the flow rate will drop again. And I would really like the water to turn over in the fish tank at least um, 1.5 times an hour. So yeah, I do have a feeling I might have to upsize a bit. But we'll, we'll just wait and see. We'll run it for a week and see how she goes. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with uh, the way it's all worked out so far. So, uh, the other bits and pieces. Um, the cabinet is over here. I still haven't um, sorted out how I'm going to safely get the electricity into the box. At the moment I'm just running off a power board outside of the box but I will be cutting a hole in the back and using some of this mesh um, to create vents and also to keep it gecko and rodent proof. Uh, the air uh, compressor is just suspended there. These little jobbies get rather loud if you put them down on a um, surface so I like to suspend them. Um, that's running the uh, fish tank and yeah I'm going to have a couple of shelves down the bottom I'm going to fortify the base shelf to hold a deep cycle battery that I've got to set up the uh, backup system and I also obviously need to um, yeah, connect the backup system but I'm not too concerned at the moment because we have no fish in there um, yeah so I, what I'm going to have to do is cut a little bit of a hole at the back I think and um, have the wires coming through and then just cover it over with this mesh to stop the geckos and rodents getting in as I said so that is pretty much all it um, for just a basic run through on the system. I will bring you back when I um, pop fish in there and all that sort of thing. Um, which brings me to some questions that folks ask me over on the YouTube Stories app. So onto the comments and questions on Stories. Hector's asked tilapia for the new system. Uh, no, not tilapia. Here in Australia they're classed as a noxious species. So you can't keep them at all even though they are in a lot of river systems. I'll be using the Baku Grunter or jade perch. They're just a really nice table fish. Um, they fry up well on the barbecue or on the pan. Um, so I'll be running them in here. They also handle our warmer temperatures a lot better. So yeah, this time around, those guys. Uh, Zaire has asked decoupled system. Uh, not this one, as you saw, it's gonna be a split flow system. Uh, decoupled systems, from my understanding, I've never run one, do run a lot better when there's a larger water volume. It just makes it easier to manage the uh, water chemistry and keep all the levels nice and stable. It might be something I try down the line, but not with something as small as this. Now, Samir has asked, have you ever tried a super cheap system? Uh, well, I do use a lot of secondhand bits and pieces. The beige tank there, I bought them secondhand off Paul Van. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul, if you're still watching these clips. And uh, a lot of the blue barrels and other bits and pieces I bought secondhand, including the black bed over the back there and the frame from Danny. Thanks again, Danny. So I do try and keep the, the cost down where I can. Um, if you are after bargains, eBay, um, also Alibaba, uh, a good places to buy cheaper plumbing supplies if you can hook up with some wholesalers on there uh, the pumps and that just shop around um, yeah pick a brand that you you like and a model number and just shop around and see what you can come up with so that's about all I can suggest for you folks who are looking to um, create a super cheap system just look around for second hand and those bargains online now um, greenhouse plants and plants has asked how many fish are you going to put in there? Uh, well, for this system here, I'm only looking at running around about 25 fish. I could push it and probably go up to around about 28 to 30 with the amount of media I have in there. If I was to follow the, the beginner's ratio of one fish, you want to grow out to 500 grams or one pound per 25 liters or 6.6 .6 gallons of wet media. Um, I could go a little bit further because I do have some extra biofiltration in there, but I think I'm just going to stick to around about 25. Also too, because we're going to buy a 50 bag and split it between my mum's system and ours here, and they often throw in a couple of extras, so yeah, you might end up with 28 fish yet. 
Uh, it's just one of those things. I, I don't really want to push the um, stocking density of this one here. We'll just leave it be and then yeah, I'll, when we set up the larger system down the track, I might add in a few other larger biofilters so we can stock a few more. We'll just have to wait and see. And on the second clip, Ian asked, honest question because I have no idea, would adding aquarium plants to the fish tank and or shrimp underwater snails help the system become more efficient and keep itself clean better? Uh, or would they suck too many nutrients from the grow beds? Um, the plants, I wouldn't worry about the plants themselves, mainly because all the nutrients will be taken out by the plants in the grow beds. Snails, I've had snails in the system before. Uh, they pretty much all just disappeared as the pH dropped, which happens over time uh, due to the nitrification of the ammonia. Uh, the pH drops and the snails pretty much all disappeared. Uh, I think that's just due to the fact that they don't like an acid environment because it makes it hard to have a nice thick shell. Uh, the same with shrimp or prawns and yabbies, crayfish as well. I like to run my pH fairly low and most of those sort of um, hard shelled critters don't like it. So um, not something I'd add in mind. I do know folks who run their systems a little bit higher pH wise have fantastic luck with um, crayfish in particular, red claw here in Australia. I think you folks in the States have them as well. Um, but yeah, for myself, I don't worry about that. Uh, there will be some worms in the grow beds, but yeah, just worms and fish and plants and I'll pretty much all stick with that. So that's about it for the questions from the stories. Uh, remember, I will be posting clips on how I built the radial flow settler and also how I'm going to cycle the system, that sort of thing. So if you haven't subscribed already and you want to see those clips, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button and then pound on the bell icon once it appears. And YouTube, as I said before, will hopefully uh, send you a reminder that the clip has been posted to the channel. You can come along and suss it out. And before I go, I really do need to thank you all for coming along and leaving your comments down below and thumbing up the clips. Really do appreciate it. A special thanks also to those marvellous folks over on our Farm Your Own Yard website and the YouTube membership program. Thank you for your ongoing support, folks. I really do appreciate it. As always, my super contributors have their websites and Facebook pages linked down in the description below. Really would appreciate it if you popped on over and showed them some love. Let them know I sent you there. I will pretty much all leave it there, though. It's getting a bit late. Need to go up and organise some dinner. I do hope you're having a fantastic weekend and that your own gardens and aquaponics are booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, have a top one.